we were bombed. Everything was black at night in the blackout. The only light came from the towns in the south of England. They were on fire. Could see orange flames against the black sky. We had a very clear view though of the fact that we were really fighting for peace. I remember one verse of this song was there'll be love and laughter and peace ever after tomorrow when the world is free. I joined the Air Force, became a navigator and um, joined Bomber Command over in England. And when I got shot down, I would be, what, 22, I guess. I turned 21 in the South China Sea, and I was uh, 19 when I went in. Uh, I went from <clears throat> living in a small town to a military environment surrounded by steel and concrete and oil and uh, people in uniform, and um, lost my individuality. It was a pretty confusing time. I joined the Women's Air Force in Britain when I was, I suppose I was nearly 19. And I was given the job of radar. My job was to plot what I could see on the radar screen and send that straight through to fighter command. I was a Vietnam deserter. I deserted, uh, not from Vietnam, but I deserted from New York City. And now I'm a potter on Galliano Island. It changed my life, forcing me to make decisions I didn't really want to make. Nobody really wants to have the possibility of never coming back to their homeland and maybe not being able to spend time with your family. It seemed to be a war that had to be fought, unlike some other battles that go on. I don't think I'm a pacifist. Say a force like the Nazis in World War II were coming up on the shores of America. I would fight. I would kill anybody I, you know, that needed to be killed to protect our freedom from oppression. Oh, I absolutely believe in peace. And I think that... Um, most people that have been exposed to any sort of military experience uh, at whichever end they're at, right, are have very strong opinions about peace. And so I went from being mildly supportive to being anti-war. Do I believe in peace? I certainly do. It's the only time that countries flourish when they're at peace. The arts flourish. Everybody uh, can trade. It's, it's, it's essential. War is totally destructive. It can bring out the best in people and the worst in people. Then so can peace, actually. I don't think peace exists. I was fighting to stop this uh, problem with this culture engulfing a lot of other ones and destroying people for no other reason than their own interest. Everyone who could possibly contribute in England when we were expecting invasion did join up. It was a mission. We, we, we wanted peace. We didn't want a war. In fact, we put it off so long when one country after another was invaded. And at that time, I didn't have a lot of political consciousness. So I thought that, well, I've already done two years, I might as well do the last two years and go in the army as an officer if I'm going to go in the army. Peace means different things to different people at different times. There never has been peace. There was the Korean War, there was Vietnam. The Vietnam War, I just felt, was a political war that was misrepresented to the people. I, it was a big lie. On any given weekend or on any given time, you would have an anti-war protest for, it wasn't said peace protest, it was anti-war, right? But remember,
remember we were the first living generation that saw uh, uh, police attacks on civilians. That affects your attitude towards peace. And I had seen quite a lot of brutal um, police tactics against demonstrators. Um, I had been in the demonstrations. I've seen them coming, you know, charging through the crowds with horses and beating people indiscriminately with batons. And there was a fair amount of blood. And, you know, it just roused up a lot of emotions in me. And uh, made me think real hard about where I was going. There is no peace movement now. I mean, people are desensitized. People largely just don't give a shit unless the bodies are in the street.